My name is Holger Hoffelmann. I am responsible for crop production here. Our goal is to find out whether we can use NIR's technology to fertilize the nutrient content of slurry much more accurately and much more precisely than we otherwise can with a one-time or two-time examination of the slurry. Einmaligen oder zweimaligen Untersuchung der Gülle können. The trial we are conducting now is structured as follows. We are applying 50 kilograms N ammonium N over the first lane, measured with NIR's technology. On a second lane, we are applying 66 kilograms total nitrogen, also measured with NIR. And we are applying a constant volume of 23.8 meters cubed on the third lane. Today, we harvest the plots planted in spring with our plot harvester, which is able to determine the yield on a plot-by-plot -plot basis, i.e. wheat harvested from the plot. In parallel, the combine can also take a corresponding sample, which we can then analyze later, for example for moisture and hectoliter weight. We have looked at and evaluated the data and are able to give the first summary of the last two trial years now. What has it done for us? We have used John Deere's technology to actually apply the slurry in such a way that we do not apply cubic meters of slurry, but rather a nutrient, namely nitrogen, and thus ensure an even supply across the field. For the farmer, this means first of all that he can better comply with legal fertilizer regulations and more precisely document what he has done. This means that we can see from maps that we have actually applied the desired 50 kilograms of nitrogen at every point on every square meter of the field. Here I refer again to the findings of Miss Janssen. There are two diagrams, or rather two publications, that prove on the one hand that slurry, even when it is stirred, is still very inhomogeneous, especially if we have a relatively large slurry tank and a relatively long application period, where then even with the last cubic meters the slurry can technically no longer be stirred. The second is, even in the slurry tankers there can be segregation if there are long travel distances. So on the one hand there is heterogeneity in the barrels, and on the other hand there is heterogeneity in all the slurry we apply. The farmer can now respond to this with John Deere technology, allowing him to apply slurry in a much better and more targeted way. If we now analyze the different application variants, we can summarize. Comparing the constant volume application, a good 20 meters cubed over the entire field according to the analysis, with a NIR's analysis by NH4N or by total N, the total N variant gives us about 3% yield advantage. At least that's roughly what we've proven over the last two years. And in the ammonium variant, between 4 to 5 percent increased yield. If we now convert this to economic yield, at about 7.5 to 8 tons per hectare yield and a wheat price of 180 euros per ton, this 3 to 5 percent actually means about 50 to 70 euros per hectare. Even if we achieve 50 euros per hectare, this is quite profitable even for smaller farms. This means that not only large farms benefit from it, but everyone who uses slurry can benefit in this context. And something else to take into account, crop nurturing becomes much more even. In the past, after volume-based slurry application, we have sometimes experienced a lodging of plants due to a certain oversupply in specific zones of the field. This probably happens much less with this even application, 